As a construction or maintenance worker, you step into a world where your job can bring you face-to-face with hazardous energy sources. Whether you're working on an HVAC system or fixing an electrical issue, you work with and around hazardous energy almost daily. Understanding and knowing when to use lockout tagout procedures can mean the difference between a job well done and a potentially hazardous situation. In this safety video, we're discussing the crucial function of lockout tagout procedures and how to stay safe around hazardous energies. Lockout tagout is a process that protects you from the accidental release of hazardous energy that could lead to serious injuries or even worse. Working on energized equipment exposes you to hazards such as electric shocks, arc flashes, and explosions. These are real dangers that can be prevented by following your company's lockout tagout procedures. When it comes to hazardous energy, it's not just about electricity alone. We're talking pneumatic, which is compressed air, and even mechanical energy as well. Each type of energy can exist in two states, active or stored energy. Active energy refers to energy that is actively being used like electricity turning a motor, and stored energy describes power that is waiting to be used. A perfect example of stored energy is the charge in a capacitor found in condensing units. Now that you understand the risks, let's talk about how to work safely around hazardous energy using lockout tagout. So what is lockout tagout? At its core, it's a safety process that ensures any equipment you're servicing is completely de-energized and is in a safe state. This is done by attaching locks and tags to energy isolation devices like circuit breakers, valves, or switches. Additionally, lockout tagout prevents other individuals from accidentally energizing equipment that is being serviced or repaired. It alerts them that the system has been de-energized. In a lockout tagout program, there are two roles that are essential for ensuring workplace safety around hazardous energy. The authorized employee, who is trained to recognize hazardous energies and can perform lockout tagout of equipment, and the affected employee, who are those individuals working in the area where equipment maintenance is being performed. For example, another individual that's working in the same area can be considered an affected employee. When should you use lockout tagout? Lockout tagout is required for job tasks that involve de-energizing equipment before maintenance and repair activity can be performed. Some common examples include repairing electrical outlets, when working on light switches, ceiling fans, and other permanently wired electrical fixtures, servicing air conditioning equipment, and when inspecting any other equipment that might contain hazardous energies. Lockout tagout is not required for equipment with a cord and plug, as long as it is not plugged into a power source, and the employee servicing the equipment has exclusive control of the equipment. When performing a lockout tagout procedure, locks and tags must be firmly attached to the energy isolation device. You should always use the standardized lockout tagout devices that were provided by your supervisor. Always select the appropriate lockout tagout device for the energy isolation points. Each tag must include the name of the owner, their contact information, and the date of application. And you should also notify other individuals working in the area. The lockout tagout procedure has four basic parts. Step 1. Identify all possible energy sources. Step 2. Use breakers or switches to de-energize the equipment. Step 3. Install locks and tags to secure the energy isolation points. Always use a lock and a tag to prevent the system from being accidentally energized. When multiple individuals are involved, everyone must use their own lock and tag and mark it clearly with their contact information. And step four, using a calibrated meter to test and verify that the system has been de-energized. When working with pressurized lines, check gauges to verify all pressure has been released before starting any work. Once the equipment is successfully locked and tagged out, you can begin repair activities. Remember, if you need to test the system, make sure all tools and personnel are clear first. When the work has successfully been completed, remove your locks and tags in reverse order and ensure the area is clear before re-energizing the equipment. Lockout tagout is a team effort. By following your company's procedures, you not only comply with safety standards, but also protect you and your team members. Did you know that in 2020, a study conducted by the Associated Builders and Contractors found that daily safety toolbox talks lead to a remarkable 82% reduction in total recordable incident rates compared to those conducted monthly? The study shows that the frequency of toolbox talks directly correlates with incident rates. Consistent safety toolbox talks lead to less accidents, which is why many companies this year are using Safely EO to create and schedule these talks weeks 
and months in advance, so your team will be consistently reminded of the job hazards and safety protocols. You get access to Safely Yayo's Toolbox Talk library that comes with hundreds of text-based and video-based toolbox talks that covers any industry. The Toolbox Talk app makes it easy for your employees and supervisors to consume safety talks from their own mobile devices and acknowledge its completion at the click of a button. All completed safety talks are tracked and the data can be exported and available for use. The platform digitizes your safety talks process so you can focus on what really matters, keeping your team safe and informed. Don't wait until it's too late. Workplace incidents can cost your company millions in liability lost productivity, and damaged reputation. To learn more, just click the link in the description of this video to request a quick demo.